Namaskar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our viewers around the world. I am Hari, and I am accompanied by Kanaga to host today's discussion. Sambash is an open community of like-minded Indians from different spheres of life, from IT to accounting, from students to retired seniors living in Europe. We come together to discuss the real Indian cash, culture, art, societal issues, and history. To continue our empowering discussion series, today we have Shri Shantanu Gupta Ji from the Ramana School. Namaskar Ji. Namaskar. Namaskar, Jai Shri Ram, Shantanu Ji. Namaskar. We have a very interesting topic to discuss today about one of the great epics of ancient India, Ramayana. Ramayana is part of Bharata Itihasa. Set in about 5th century BCE, it has traveled through centuries and great civilizations. It is astonishing to note not only India, but the whole of Southeast Asia celebrate Rama. The values and heritage that it brings along is a great inspiration even in today's generation. Ever wondered what makes it so relevant and how people are able to connect to it even today? How did this survive through a number of years? With the advancement of mind and tools, why does people have to derive inspiration from something that happened very long ago? What do we learn from it? Why do we have to refer to our past to build our future? I'm sure there are many people like us seeking answers to similar questions and much more that comes to our mind building curiosity, isn't it? Well, without much pondering, let's welcome our guest for today to shed some light and thoughts behind the topic. I now request Hari to introduce the guest. Thank you, Kanaga. Mr. Shantanu is the founder of the Ramayana School, which does online workshops with children and families across Europe, US, Canada, and Asia on Indian ancient texts. He is also an Indian author, TEDx speaker, and a very frequent TV panelist. He has done management education from XLRI Jamshedpur and Masters in Public Policy and Governance from the University of Sussex, United Kingdom. He has worked as a process and management consultant in many countries like India, Switzerland, Cyprus, Hungary, and Israel. He has represented India in many international conferences on economy and policy making. He has left his corporate career to become, the, to become an entrepreneur to nurture young minds and connect them to Indian roots. Once again, Namaskar Shantanuji. To set up the stage today, can you please give us a brief about Ramayana's universal nature? Uh, the, uh, so, when you talk about the text of Ramayana, uh, as uh, Kanagaji said, it sits in the whole literature system in the Itihasa, right? So, Indian literature system, uh, in the knowledge system, has two branches, right? One is Shruti, Shruti one is Smriti. The Shruti was supposed to be only remembered, memorized, not written. Right? Though I think someone may question but Vedas are written, but Vedas are written very recently. They just written thousand years back because when we were started getting invaded, a lot of Rishis thought that maybe the Shruti Parampara may not continue. So they started writing. But before that, it was all written. But still today, the tradition is tradition is all the Gurukuls that are existing to memorize it. Right. So that the Shruti tradition under that we have Vedas and Upanishads. Now comes the Smriti tradition under which we have uh, Itihasa, Purana and Smritis again. So Smriti has Smritis again, almost like Singapore's capital is Singapore. So right. Uh, yeah. So in Itihasa, we have two, two Mahakavyas, right? Mahabharata and Ramayana. Where it sits, I want to tell you the context where it sits. Someone, say, someone may tell that when Valmiki written, and I have a little disagreement with Kangnaji's date. I don't agree with the five, five, uh, fifth century date. I go with Dr. Nilesh Yogi's date, which is almost 12, uh, 12, 14,000 years old text, 12, 12, uh, 12 uh, BC, right? 12th century BC, right? Which is almost 12208. He exactly gives the day of when Ravana was killed, when Ramana was born, when Rama was uh, born, uh, each and every uh, date, right? Based on almost 575 references within Ramayana. So in Itihasa literature, Itihasa, the definition of Itihasa is Purvavrittam Kathayuktam. Right, it, it, it's a long shloka, but the main thing is purva yuktam katha yuktam, uh, purva yuktam katha yuktam, meaning something which has happened in the past but narrated in the form of a katha, narrated in the form of a story. So that makes us history. So, so I think the important part is purva, pur, uh, it, it happened in purva, right? 
एंड द पर्पज ऑफ इतिहास इज द फोर धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष दैट इज द फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ द श्लोका इन द डेफिनेशन सो एनी टेक्स्ट विच विच अचीव यू विच अलाउ यू टू अचीव द गोल ऑफ विच अलाउ यू टू अचीव द गोल ऑफ धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष and it's it's purva yuktam katha yuktam like it happened in the past and narrated in from the story that become itihasa lot of people say okay ramayana is like odyssey lama is like iliad no they are adventure stories right they are not historical context and because i think they, 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 their attempt is if they classify uh, the epics mahabharata and ramayana among the uh, among the fictional texts they can call even mahabharata and ramayana fictional but now there are enough proofs the, the the proofs of the stars proofs of the language proofs of the places That Ramayana actually happened at at, at certain date, right? So that the historical context, and if we start the Bala Kanda of Ramayana, the first four sargas is about why Ramayana is written, and that's that's most important, right? Why the text is written? As I told you, it's a historical context told in a told in a uh, story format, uh, and there's a beautiful conversation between Narad Muni and Valmiki Rishi, and and Valmiki Rishi is asking Narad Muni, who is this person who is still surviving, who has this one, two, three, four, sixteen qualities? who is disciplined who is even good looking who is who is, is resolute who is adept right who is a warrior like there are the 16 qualities he lists right and and then narad muni narrates in a very short it's called like a small ramayana so in balagan there is whole ramayana and narad muni recites the whole ramayana but the purpose is that can we establish uh, not establish can we write the story of a man which is existing and that's the word using existing and that's that itself shows the history it's not some story which is created out of the blue which has existed and we can write about them which will become a guideline a user manual for the generations to come and user manual for what user manual for every every aspect of life be as a leader be as a husband be as a brother be as a son be as a warrior be as a be be, be as a as a colleague for everything is set of a rule right so it's a user manual someone may say vedas are already written Upanishads are already written. What is the need for? Why is the need for a uh, text like Valmiki Ramayana? But the idea is because Vedas are very dense. Upanishads, which is a commentary, the philosophical commentary on Vedas, that's also very dense. You need a certain lifestyle to even to even study them, listen them, comprehend them, and that lifestyle is a tough lifestyle. Someone can that's a Brahminical lifestyle. Eat in a certain fashion, live in a certain fashion. Uh, uh, we we celebrate. So every the whole 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 of population may not follow that lifestyle. and until once you follow that that hard discipline lifestyle you may not be even able to access the knowledge what is what is there in vedas and upanishads so i think that's a very practical approach for the population and large can i give something very very palatable which is again purva vrittam katha yuktam like in the form of the katha that's why maybe some of us can be little scholarly in ramayana but everyone who is indian living in india even even not even following hindu religion they know the story of ramayana even after 14000 years right why because it's katha yuktam it's it made it written in such a format it's written the uh, it's is rama's biography ramayana is the journey of rama right rama's biography written by valmiki valmiki ji in such a format in in six kandas or six plus seven if we consider uttarakhand also seven kandas in such a fashion that's still surviving in fact and this will end the answer uh, in fact valmiki ji says one, at one place that till the time mountains are are standing till the time rivers are flowing the story of ramayana will be narrated right and 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 we are seeing right we are seeing right i just go on the road go to any shopkeeper also of a small shop if i talk the story of ramayana he will be knowing right if i go to a top ceo he will be knowing the ramayana and that was the purpose right that's why is the epic right that's why is the epic which is surviving so long in this uh, and if you see the reach of ramayana it's amazing the reach of ramayana is amazing every state of india have their own version of ramayana is translated in multiple languages it because india was a uh, india was a trading country it traveled a lot of countries in thailand hari ji you will be amazed to hear the national book of thailand is ramakian which is ramayana the 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 position of position the name of the position of the kings called rama rama 1 rama 2 rama 3 the current king is called rama 10 right indonesia 88% per, uh, per people are muslim there ramayana is a legend there In fact, there is a huge statue of of Rama with bow and arrow in a park in Bali, and that is like a almost like a statue of liberty for USA. If you show that picture to any world traveler, he will say this is Bali, and that's the identity. A, a Rama statue, identity of a, a, a Muslim country, right? And and there is a place called uh, Jog Jakarta, right? 
there are two three groups the one group particularly they are doing a ramayana ballet every single day from last 43 years can you imagine that even on the day of the tsunami even if two guests will come they will they'll perform the play i'm not sure what they're doing in covid but pre covid from last 43 years and and all the group every person is a muslim guy and and when i met them in india recently i asked them like it's that it's not your faith it's a religious text for us and he gave a very beautiful answer he said islam is my faith but ramayana is my culture ram is my culture and if i say that in india i know i'll get a flag right and if i make if if, if prime minister narendra modi makes ramayana as the national book of india i, I know heavens will fall right so i think that that's the kind of engagement the whole world has with ramayana everybody is learning with with with, with rama and i'm sure i'm blessed that i have i have taken this initiative of ramayana school and i'm now trying to translate into various formats so yeah sorry long answer to your short question <laughs> now indeed it is very inspiring uh, shantanu shantanu ji thanks for uh, putting forth uh, that kind of a perspective here and how ramayana is spread across different parts of uh, the world here so again on on the same context uh, there is an interesting question as well so here as you indicated yeah so ramayana is more on a value based approach so there it says how an ideal person should behave how one should uh, behave in a relationships for example how should we sacrifice ourselves give forgiveness protecting the weak or even compassion so on so this is the kind of approach that ramayana mm -hmm. offers in contrast with the with the perspective approach of mm -hmm. mahabharata yeah how one should function in a day to day mm -hmm. life so why do you think ramayana mm -hmm. should be thought more with respect uh, yeah instead of mahabharata because people here uh, they can more relate to krishna in their day to day life mm -hmm. how uh, mm -hmm. yeah his jovial nature yeah. and they they like yeah. uh, that aspect yeah so I, i think as a, as i as i placed you in the whole system right shruti text where we have vedas and upanishads and the smriti text where we have itihasa purana and and smriti again like manusmriti and in and itihasa again we have two branching the two itihasa two only two texts of itihasa mahabharata and uh, ramayana right and if we pit ramayana and mahabharata against each other and which is a very interesting uh, interesting topic right and that's the in, uh, concept in india this word blasphemy is a very foreign word like we are allowed to challenge a text and come to a conclusion there is no blasphemy to even challenge mahabharata and ramayana each other so i think if i talk in today's parlance vedas and upanishads is the perfect knowledge the final knowledge and if, in fact it's it, it, it's described that they supersedes if there is a conflict in ramayana and vedas vedas will supersede if there is a conflict in in vidu if there is a conflict between mahabharata and upanishads upanishads will win right that's that's but again so vedas and upanishads are the final knowledge right now i consider ramayana as a user manual that how to use it in a perfect scenario user manual is a perfect scenario right no exceptions in a perfect scenario if you want to follow every word of veda every word of upanishad how you lead your life right with earth kaam moksha with, with with dharma earth kaam and moksha and if if you allow me to spend a minute on um, uh, uh, dharma earth kaam and moksha in fact indian tradition indian knowledge system is the only knowledge system which says earning artha means money and kama means entertainment are the legit goals of life there's no guilt around it the whole world system of christianity islam puts a lot of guilt around it right entertainment earning money and that's leads to socialism right so socialism the idea is only spring from the earning money is bad indian system indian knowledge system is saying but do it with dharma do do dhan arjan do earn money but with dharma that that becomes the concept of csr corporate social responsibility right do it with 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 responsibility do entertainment do 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 satiate your uh, uh, senses but with responsibility but the final aim is moksha and these two texts both ramayana and mahabharata caters to that but how can i differentiate ramayana and mahabharata ramayana i'll consider the user manual is a user manual for your final knowledge uh, which is vedas and upanishad and i consider mahabharata as a troubleshooting manual right so ramayana is the is the user manual that you do this 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 the perfect thing right ram rama is a perfect right the ideal person right 
but again if there is a because perfect is not possible right because the people around you are not perfect you have duryodhanas also right you have ravanas also right but rama deals with duryodhan also in a very legit man, man, fashion providing like feelers of sandhi and can you can you can you can can you can we not fight right and and mahabharata is a trouble shooting whenever the trouble is happening what all because the scenarios in mahabharata is even more complex ramayana does not provide you so many scenarios right mahabharata provides you like almost every scenario that you can ever face in life right with every relationship with any corporate personal social relationship so i think th so that's the that's the way i want to put it but again uh, and and ramayana and mahabharata talk to each other they also talk to each other at various points there are lot of characters who travel from here to there I am sure you know these are Surya Vansh, Ramayan is Surya Vansh, and this is Chandra Vansh, Solar Dynasty, Lunar Dynasty. There are connections there. If you see the whole lineage, there are connections there. In fact, now my parents are requesting that when Ramayan and Mahabharata are so connected within Ramayan school, why didn't we start offering Mahabharata courses? So I think by October, November, we we'll start uh, offering Mahabharata courses, and there sits Gita also. Uh, that's but but Mahabharata text is huge, right? Ramayan is twenty-four thousand shlokas. And Mahabharata is hundred thousand shlokas, almost four times of uh, Ramayana. Ramayana has six kinds or seven kinds, if you consider Uttar Khand. Uh, Mahabharata is eighteen parvas, right? That that's a very extensive uh, story. So that's how I am able to uh, connect uh, Ramayana and Mahabharata. Thank you, Shantanu ji. Thank you for explaining uh, the link between the Mahabharata and Ramayana. uh going on with the trend of interpretations today the trend is to write interpretations from uh, the epics ramayana and mahabharata for example the book called sita or the warrior of mithila uh, we have interpretations everywhere uh, how healthy are these interpretations and uh, why 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 should we not let people learn uh, the original shlokas of valmiki ramayana and how healthy is this are these interpretations and what is ramayana so i think standards? that's a very interesting question so when i start my class i i tell them i start with this that do you guys do do you guys know to swim people say yes or no do i do do you guys know to dive dive inside water are you a diver they say yes or no whatever but i tell them for swimming you need a gear right for diving you need a gear right you need a you need a cap maybe goggles maybe beer plug maybe some kind of costume some flipper some floating maybe some oxygen right so ramayana and mahabharata kind of texts also need almost deep diving and swimming inside them right they are not simple texts for sure right at story level they are fine you can watch ramayana sagar ji's episode uh, or br chopra ji's ramayana at story level they are fine but if you want to become even a mini scholar right you you and for them you need tools so i offer them lot of tools right and that's in fact proprietary to us and that's why we are able to reach to so many people and one of the major tools is the valmiki ramayan right Valmiki Ramayan has more than three hundred and plus interpretations and translations and tikas we call them commentaries, right? Tika, tikpani, and commentaries, right? Now I think your question is: Are all of them dharmic, if I can use the word, and not dharmic, right? Are all of them can be followed or cannot be followed, right? Now the answer is not simple for sure, right? See, Indian tradition is not about simple answers. and that, that that's what made it complex and that's what made it very difficult for a lot of westerners to grab it because they are habitual of yes and no binaries this is good this is bad right we are not like that they are blasphemy not blasphemy we are not like that even even when we talk about vegetarian food non vegetarian food i'm digressing a little bit geeta doesn't say anything geeta says this is sattvic food this is rajasic food this is tamasic food you eat what you want to eat if you eat rajasic food this will happen if it is sattvic food this will happen it's it's like a showing the mirror to you now now you decide indian text consider a human being as an intelligent person right you decide i'll tell you what will happen with what and i'll decide that hari ji is an intelligent person he will he, he will he will he will decide right so now coming to this interpretation lot of this interpretation hari ji and not only the recent one the, the let's say kamman ramayan or adhyatma ramayan there lot of version of indian ramayan let's say where where is my copy so let us give me a second Uh, let's say Ram Charit Manas, right? Amazingly famous. I think, I, I think you will be surprised if you do a survey. Manas, it's called Manas. It is a short form also. People have a trendy name. It's called Manas, right? If you if you go in Ayodhya, Ayodhya is like the the, the main place, right? And you do a large sample survey. People talk about Manas, not Valmiki Ramayan. And Manas is written when? Five hundred years back. when acharya tulsidas happened 500 years back 
and this, there's a major digression not major but there are at least 15 15 major departures from the original drama but shall i call it is a dharmic text maybe not uh, the sundarkand part the sundarkand recitation that is very common there are a lot of mandalis who are doing sundarkand recitation considered a very powerful it comes from where not valmiki rama it comes from tulsi rama right uh, hanuman chalisa amazing text comes from where goswami tulsi das right but again so let's say there are a lot of digression let's say calling hanuman ji sugriv monkeys started coming from tulsi rama but again valmiki rama and calls them human beings they are all human proportions right they are the hanuman ji was the very knowledgeable person with vedas and upanishads monkeys cannot learn vedas and upanishads right and there are a lot of description but again if you talk to a lot of manas scholars uh, ramcharit manas scholars and it is written avadhi by that time i think you have to keep in mind that we were also attacked continuously by outsiders and we are the oldest living civilization right and we use very smart techniques to save ourselves the way we are a lot of people from north where the attack was very 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 harsh moved towards south and now you can also trace the lineage right that how people and that's why all the vedic knowledge is still a lot of priest in north indian temples are south indians right because vedic knowledge and the traditions were able they were able to maintain because the infiltration by islamic rulers is was far 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 less the uh, in south of india than in north of india right because of that we we have to come up with a lot of versions of ramayana or our text in the format which people of that time can consume so that why it came in avadhi if the if the study of sanskrit has decreased for any reason if the study of sanskrit for any reason has decreased and the study of valmiki ramayana is a dense text is decreased what what uh, what uh, 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 tulsi das ji thought can i bring it in avadhi avadhi is a, is a is a is a form of uh, it's like a dialect of hindi if i can use the word uh, it, it's a full fledged language in itself but similar to hindi i should not call a dialect of hindi a uh, 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 similar to hindi if i can call uh, yeah just give me a second yeah yeah so if i can of the so that was available to everyone that time that was available to everyone that time so and he was trying to put a lot of concept as very palatable concepts right because a lot of powers lot of things what hanuman ji was doing he was saying maybe people will not able to relate to it okay let me call him a monkey that will become easy for me and little busy but that's not that he was not trying to destroy the story you have to show the intent but again so now now if you catch my word intent so if the current translations or commentaries if their intent is fine if their intent is to communicate it to a modern audience then i'm fine then i'm fine with it right so let's say what amish tripathi has done i'm largely fine with it and he has taken the some version normally uh, luckily i got the audience within couple of times in literature festivals uh, what he has done is using some adhyatma ramayan or kamban ramayan which is which is a legitimate version of ramayan but again a scholar of ramayan if you want to do a commentary debate discussion of ramayan the original version is valmiki ramayan so yeah that's that's my take on that's ramayana school take on the intent and for which for what was is it done for sensationalization just to just to blow, blow out of proportion or just to communicate the story in the fashion where today's uh, uh, younger generation wants to learn and to create a need and hunger for them to read the original text which is valmiki ramayana for sure and you know all these texts are not considered itihas itihas is only valmiki ramayana even manas is not itihasa manas is literature manas is literature any text after that kamban ramayana adhyatma ramayana all of them are literature only uh, uh, valmiki ramayana is considered the uh, part of uh, indian knowledge system and un- considered under the itihasa category with mahabharata vyas vyasa mahabharata yeah, yeah that indeed a uh, very uh, nice point there uh, shantanu ji but I- i'm still wondering as you as you pointed out towards the end that uh, yeah for for the for the people in today's generation to relate to ramayana so you have to start it in a, in an easy way so they can at least relate to it and then you can inspire them to follow valmiki ramayana towards the end so in these situations or uh, you will meet different kinds of people with different backgrounds and uh, expertise what are the challenges that ramayana school faces in order to yeah get them up to speed inspire them to go back to their roots see my intention uh, kanaga ji was very simple when i started ramayana school and if i digress a little bit tell you the journey of ramayana school also right so uh, i am a father of two children one is 7 year old is a boy his name is abhiram and uh, uh, other one is one and a half year old daughter she is too too chotu uh, still 
and i'm married to a south indian so the names are very south indian my wife is uh, from andhra pradesh telangana area uh, the name is abhiram and nakshatra so abhiram is abhiram doesn't go to a school we are home schooling him right and the only formal space he goes to a physical space like because of covid that that is also happening online but only physical space he is going to regularly is, is a, a bal vihar of chinmaya mission right he goes there every sunday in a nearby town i live in delhi nearby town noida he goes there around one and a half year back he comes to me and says one and a half two years back he comes to me and says that today i heard about dashavataram the das avatar of vishnu and some story then when uh, rama broke the ban dhanush for sita sita marrying the sita mata uh parashuram ji was not very happy and he came right but his his problem was not that his problem was that when parashurama and rama both are the avatar of vishnu how can they come together right but his idea was that vishnu will come go back come again go back right and that's a linear linear thought which is a very valid thought right and to 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 be very frank i did not have a very clear answer right so i gave him some answer so that uh, he will feel good about it then but then it started my quest about ramayana and i think we have to be very frank as indians as hindus our knowledge of ramayana is largely i am not commenting on anyone you might be knowing better than me or or otherwise uh, our knowledge of ramayana is largely limited to ramanand sagar ji's ramayana and b r chopra ji's mahabharat right largely largely as indians right how many of us has uh, uh done a course or studied as a family 24000 shlokas of valmiki ramayan or even manas or even manas right or one lakh shlokas shlokas of mahabharat or uh, the uh, read uh, very serious commentaries of ramayana and mahabharat maybe not not very many indians so i think i was in the similar boat and luckily those days if you know one of one of my entity you said i am author i am the biographer of yogi adityanath right so i was going to gorakhpur very often you know right he is from gorakhpur and his mat is gorakhpur so how you go to gorakhpur you you fly to lucknow and you travel is 4 hour journey to gorakhpur and then interesting part ayodhya comes right in between ayodhya comes on your way right so i was i was because i was going very frequently and i have i had friends in ayodhya and i have never been to ayodhya before that before 2017 i have never been to ayodhya and so i was started going to ayodhya and when i was going to ayodhya i spent one or two days there my friends used to take me to some sadhus some rishis some scholars and then i started debating uh, with them the challenging parts right the the sita zagni pariksha why why rama is killing bali hiding behind a tree is rama na real or not how can i prove to someone who doesn't have a bhakti i can believe believe is a separate thing but today's people want science and logic uh, to prove it right so when i debating started then i say oh my god it's amazing text and every shloka can make you dive and there are multiple translations and then you can go in the linguistic of sanskrit that what this word can mean what this word cannot mean and then i realize there is a body of knowledge and a body of scholars around ramayana there are there are conferences after conferences on ramayana which i was not i was not aware of that there are world ramayana conference there ram leela there are people done then the phd's on ramayana different parts of ramayana people have studied ram leela's version how they have evolved the role of ram leela in indian national movement their amazing con- commentary that how how ram leela uh, or or ramayana and ram leela as instruments have also helped uh, uh, india coming together from north to south east to west right and then i started inquiring about uh, uh, ramayana right and 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 in my class i have taken that i will go only by valmiki ramayana even to the popular story let's say lakshman rekha that's a popular story in valmiki ramayan there is no mention of lakshman rekha the rule is there lakshman sets a rule you don't you 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 will not come out of the house and he prays around the house like he sets up some kind of uh, energy uh, outside the house so that uh, any negative energy cannot come inside but there is no physical lakshman rekha with the arrow right but again lakshman rekha is so popular in normal story came from tulsi ramayan maybe onwards that every serial now now in india you get that uh, mosquito repellent right that the name is lakshman rekha to 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 show away ants and cockroaches right that common is the name lakshman rekha is right so if i challenge the thought no no there is no lakshman rekha i don't want to say that i'll say okay lakshman rekha is there but the idea is lakshmana set a rule you call it lakshman rekha or whatever that's your mind so i think i think to to to, to answer your question i want to point them to the original text valmiki ramayan right but again i don't discard any other text even i i also puranic reference also a lot of people say puranic references right 
let's say uh, jaya vijaya why Ra- rama why ravana and kumbhakarna are born i'll say it's not that i disbelieve puranas but the definition of itihasa purva vrittam katha yuktam that's not the definition of purana purana might have written for a different purpose it's not history otherwise it have been classified in itihasa that's what i'm saying i don't say take puranas with a pinch of salt but take puranas for what it is written for it might be written for something else maybe as a literature but can i believe every word of puranas as as itihasa maybe not because otherwise all those gyanis all those knowledge people must have included puranas into itihasa right so i think i try to present facts to them and don't try to uh, get normative don't try to get preachy i'm saying this is the fact you decide right so yeah that's the way i go about it uh, kangal thank you shantanu ji uh, from 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 these 30 minutes it is very clear uh, how important important uh, mahabharata and ramayana for us uh, while these itihasas can be or should be uh, taught in schools for free uh, we, we have uh, already secularists complaining uh, uh, about yoga when if the if the state tries to uh, put ramayana in the syllabus uh, of schools definitely they will have problems so how do you convince uh, a secular state to implement ramayana in schools is that even possible right right see uh, when you say secular state right i think this the word secular itself is very loaded and a very very skewed interpretation at least in indian context right what is secularism keeping state and church separately that's the word started in europe right that keeping because church church uh, as as the as the seat of christianity had a huge power with the state the state means the king or whoever is ruling ruling right they have a huge intervention right so they wanted that state and uh, state and church or religious body should be separate and that's why they called the word the, the coined the term secularism and ramayana is an amazing context of secularism right I, i'll tell you how every kingdom used to having a kuluguru a dharmic advisor right a dharmic advisor and dharmic advisor was kind of above the king can you imagine that or not even above the king i should say independent of the king right he just used to give his advice king is supposed to follow may 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 may, may follow it may not follow it that's point number 1 all the ashrams were not any of the ashrams was not under the jurisdiction of any of the king and that's called a separate separation of state and the religious body or the dharmic body right all there in separate janpatas if you remember vishwamitra ji came came and to ask the help from uh, king dashrata to get ram and lakshman to kill talaka then he takes them to jungle when rishi rishi shanga was to be called to to conduct putra kamashti yagya dashrata went to him without the crown without the footwear without the char- without the chariot just walking into his janpat right that was the separation of state and power so ramana itself talks about secularism that how state uh, and 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 these dharmic bodies can be separate and they can talk to each other when when the need 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 arise right so again coming to secular state i think there is political commentary about ram rajya mahatma gandhi which we all remember uh, our, our currency is printed with this picture right he talked about ram rajya his parikalpana of ram rajya is 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 uh, coming from the literature of ramana something why why not teaching uh, when when our currency can have picture of gandhi ji then why should not our education system should have a imprint of his ideas right if you see third chapter of fundamental rights in indian constitution there is a picture of ram lakshman sita in the original copy so the people who decided Rama, uh, decided constitution for us they had a belief in the concepts of ramayana and i think it's a amazing amazing text of state craft right when we talk about sita exile one of the major blame on on rama and in the morning i had a batch with the children in us and canada and we were debating about this topic that was two things sita's agni pariksha and sita's exile is it dharmic or adharmic right and my only point was you may consider it dharmic or dharma but everyone has two dharmas right or multiple dharmas hari hari ji you are somebody's son and daughter right you are somebody you might be somebody's husband and wife right so there you both have two dharmas you have a putra dharma you have a pati dharma and these dharmas can clash maybe your duty towards your mother and your duty towards your wife may may clash but again which dharma you precede that time that, that is and in fact that's the amazing part about mahabharata and ramayana there is no text in the world 
where two goods are goods are clashing see if it's a clash between good and bad it's a very easy clash right then you can decide then you don't need rocket science to decide between a good and a bad right but here you are constantly deciding between a good and a good good one and good two right shall i listen to dashrath my father to go to vanvas or shall i listen to kaushalya or lakshman who's saying no 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 let's revolt against dashrath ji and, uh, and 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 be be don't go to vanvas it's a war between good and a good and that's constantly happening war between good and good that's why i call it amazing text and it teaches us a lot of things so when i talked about agni pariksha or or agni pariksha or sita's exile i'm saying he had a patni dharma or parivar dharma but he had a raj dharma also it it must have been very painful for rama also but again shall i follow my raj dharma my dharma towards my public my state or shall i follow my dharma towards my wife or towards my parivar it's a tough it's a tough choice it's not it's not easy it's not between a truth and a lie it's one good but another good that's why it's a very nuanced text and that's why you have to study it very carefully not with the very very lazy prism of today i call today's prism very lazy oh you are bad i'm good these are very lazy prism right you are not absolutely good and i'm not i'm not absolutely bad right and that's what indian text is all about so there's lot to learn a secular state can learn even secularism from ramayana and amazing state craft that which dharma to be used and luckily after after long time we have such leaders also coming in india let's say if if we, if we, we i'm not trying to take it political i'm just taking a personality like prime minister narendra modi do we do we know about his name of his sister do we know the name of his brothers we don't do we know the names of the brothers and sisters of yogi adityanath we don't because for them their parivar dharma and between the raj dharma their raj dharma supersedes by multiple degrees they are they are in some form embodied the qualities of rama and that's what we want in our in our polity right so yoga as you said is one of the things and yo- there is a description of yoga also in ramayana that when vashishta rishi is teaching they are doing surya namaskar there is a there is a mention of surya namaskar rama rama lakshman all the four brothers doing surya namaskar right that's one so there are a lot of straight craft that how the straight craft was done even the strategies that's a vibhishana coming towards toward rama's side and rama taking him even after the advice of sugriva that he can be a mole like he can be sent by ravana but he said no i need one person local leadership and that's a very smart move so there are smart techniques also and there are moralistic techniques also so i think it's an amazing amazing tool of straight craft and mahabharata even more right from the moral side moral side also from the strategy side also right so even in all goodness we even without considering whether it's religious or non religious is is it attached to hindu religion or not hindu religion as i told you in a in a and, and the best 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 thing is that in a islamic indonesia in a in a buddhist thailand and a christian philippines ramayana is a major legend i don't know in a hindu country we have a problem to deal with ramayana and that's the that's that's the that's the interesting part right <laughs> yeah yeah i i can relate to what you, you just indicated <laughs> shantanu ji definitely but in a country like india where sages and sadhus we do not we don't see people really respecting them yeah they they do not get that kind of a momentum while a cine star if he comes in and meets then there is everyone gathering around and uh, yeah there is a lot of traction there so how do you see it uh, should should we just say that people are not conscious about their their history or is it okay how the leader should lead so in this case should we, should we say okay our, our government authorities they should lead by example and let people follow them yeah so uh, uh, that's a, that's a loaded question and multiple layers right you you made a commentary on leadership you made a commentary on something like as popular as bollywood or tollywood or whichever would or or you made a commentary on society in general right there are three commentaries that you made in your question and which is a very nuanced question right and where are we going wrong my idea is and i'll again go back to the kind of history we have from last 1000 to 1100 years right it is a history of survival right from sone ki chidiya we are categorized today in a developing state that's a good thing that we are in top 10 economies now now uh, today but again our per capita income is very low so we are in the rate of survival even in the modern literature of maslow hierarchy we are still on the basic needs when are at the level of basic needs 
can i will I have a time capacity intelligence uh, or intellectualism to engage with the text maybe not that's why i think texts like ramayana and mahabharata are very useful because they are in the katha yuktam in, in the uh, in, in purvaratam katha yuktam format so that's about the society that as i told you if not for uh, ramanand sagar ji's ramayan or b r chopra ji's uh, mahabharat we would not have been been uh, knowing the story it's not that in the hindu family ramayana is being uh, read and understood and debated as a family pet it's not that pet is also to start lot of people who are economically well off there is they are away from their daily struggle why don't they take it and not because of hindu culture not it, 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 you have to be scared of it and read it otherwise something god bad will happen because it's amazing text right any text cannot survive 14000 years of even after after 14000 years if it's a normal text there has to be something profound in the text that multiple countries are finding it in fact yogi atana governments Uh, one institute called Ayodhya Research Institute is doing uh, what is what they call it? I think they call it Word Ramayana Encyclopedia, and they're already researched. There are hundred plus countries in the world which has a Ramayana legend in their culture, in their polity, in their dance forms, in their clothes, in their theater, in their singing. They they're finding various where uh, their sports, tourist places. There are hundred plus countries. Right, Ramayana written, rewritten, translated, multiple. There are almost three hundred versions are still counting. It cannot happen with the normal text. There's something might be performed. Do you think if I'm spreading a rumor, I have to be something like super rumor monger to to maintain a rumor for fourteen thousand years and create structures from Ayodhya in Prayag, in Chitrakoot, in 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 Panchwati, in Kishkinda, in Sri Lanka, in Rameshwaram, in Ramtek, in Lepakshi. Like Valmiki has to be a super craftsman, right? Right, uh, Valmiki Ramayan sitting in Bithur near Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh, and go to all these places and set up the places so that he can prove his story right. Like that's that's I'm sure you are getting my satire, right? Yeah. So that still shows a, it's, a, it's a true story. That still shows a true story, right? Only thing because of a struggle of thousand years that has gone out of our public memory, and good that Ramanand Sagar ji's Ramayana and brought it back to the public, uh, and now and now there is a surge, right? Now, when Yogi Adityanath celebrates amazing Deepavali, Deepotsav uh, during Diwali, and calls Korea's first lady, and all of a sudden Ayodhya becomes on the world map, then Ayodhya is get, getting noticed, right? And it's coming in public, public, public memory. Now, when during Corona, Narendra Modi governments, even after lot of problems, pushes Ramayana on on a Doordarshan, and it gets seventy seven million views, the highest episode ever watched in the world. Then people get to know, oh my God, what text is this? Why people are conscious about it, right? So it's there in the I'd say un, not unconscious memory, but the subtle memory, right? But now someone, a government or a social movement, has to push it. Right? I consider government is also a social movement selected by people, right? Government is a new name, right? Uh, a social movement. We have given someone who has practiced, who's practiced his life, who has has a more disciplined life than us. We have given him the charge that why don't you steer us? Why don't you guide us? We only give him a mandate, right? In the form of democracy. If they are pushing it also, that's also society. Narendra Modi also comes from this life also. He is not a different species, right? So, so they are pushing it is also people pushing it, right? But again, because government have huge mandate, they have a lot of control. It should be included not as a religious text, just as a leadership text, just as a state uh, uh, text of statecraft, right? Uh, because it's an ancient text, it's a text of India, it's a text uh, a Rama vowed in this land. Uh, that time there was no Hinduism, there was no Islam. Even Hinduism, the name Hinduism was later, right? Like if I'm the only one existing in the whole universe, I no don't need a name because now you have a name Hari, I should have a name Shantanu, right? So that I we can we both can differentiate. So our name given to us Hindu is a very later name. Otherwise, it was a way of life. It was a practice that we all are doing. Our documentation was also Vedas was written by multiple people. There was not an attribute of of a person. So we are not a one book, one book, one author. a uh, country right there is one book written by one author and everyone has to follow it right this is not a rule book is like yeah it's considered vedas and upanishads as a master text and their interpretation their ethiases right so again you are right society should also come forward and i think and the change should start from the family why don't i am saying post a poll in your in your session that how many you have original copy of ramayana at your home how many have a original copy of manas at your home and how many read it almost every day every week right Like it's easy to blame governments. If if government put in it in our schools, it'll be amazing, and then we need not do it at home. But again, 
if it's happening at home also a lot of teaching a lot of things we are teaching uh, our kids at home right so it has to be start from society maybe at some time there will be a critical mass which will push the government a democratic elected government will push anything which is loved by the people right people were demanding ramayana ramayana was being put right people were asking 370 should be removed 370 was removed people are asking that lot of people lot of hindus who are prosecuted in pakistan bangladesh should be brought in india government has. so if there is enough 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 critical mass which is saying i am reading ramayana at my home anyways but if you teach teach me in a school with a structured curriculum with a guided pedagogy i i'll be very happy that will also come but the change should start from from home and that's what i'm trying i'm trying to bring uh, through ramayana school i'm trying to take ramayana in a very structured fashion in a very fun fashion in a very modern learning way fashion with the with the concept of four c's right communication critical thinking collaboration and creative thinking through that i'm taking ramayana to lot of homes and hopefully uh, governments of the day uh, will adopt it sooner or later that's 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 my wish and that's my hope thank you shantanu ji uh, it is very clear uh, how mahabharata and ramayana are important and uh, and whenever we try to establish uh, the importance of mahabharata and ramayana there are in in any decade or in any generation there are certain set of people uh, who would uh, give misleading perspectives like uh, saying it was lakshmana's mistake to cut supnaka's nose which uh, created anger in ravana and he and that's why he tried to plan uh, an attack on rama or or, or even people who worship ravana so uh, how do you uh, how do you give it back to them when they give these misleading uh, so see uh, as i as i told you indian ancient texts there are a lot of middling with the text and they don't want to they don't want to establish uh, because because i think a lot of people who have read ramayana and mahabharata properly they know if everyone start reading ramayana and mahabharata to its t indian society will be very structured very well disciplined very 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 self disciplined society right which they don't want right see I, i'll tell you a very interesting example from ramayana so in kishkinda kand rama meets sugriva right rama meets sugriva and sugriva finally becomes the king right rama rama was in vanvas he could have he those days he could have lived inside the kishkinda palace he did not he started living where sugriva was living when sugriva exactly in rishimuka hill right was anybody watching was anybody watching rama that oh you are do you think somebody will put a sadgurar oh rama cheated vanvasa for 5 days by living inside kishkinda who was watching rama nobody rama was watching himself and today's society today's society i call it a cctv camera society if you remove cctv camera from the market they will looting they they are not looting because it's it's cctv police and government because of that society is running the way it's written not because of swadharma not because of self consciousness that society was running because of self consci- consciousness right not because of not because of some rules and regulation that king will do they were there but largely it was propagated by but people don't want that people don't want that uh, uh, to happen in fact a lot of people has created this myth that don't keep mahabharata at home it's a bad omen mahabharata will create war at home right it's a war story they don't even know that the war of ramayana went longer than the war of mahabharata so if you can keep Ma- ramayana no why not mahabharata and you know uh, 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 mahabharata it's called mahabharat do you think any word of it's not maha war it's not maha maha vijay or maha yuddh right it's mahabharat that how varad bharat can deal in fact when i think is akbar uh, you know akbar was into translate translating a lot of this indian text into arabic when his people translated the i i i'm forgetting the arabi word that that they the title uh, mahabharata into the arabi word translated into the big war we never call it a big war we call it mahabharat right and then people started calling it that is a story of big war and you should not keep it you should not keep it uh, inside your house right so lot of people will say but original your only resort is valmiki rama right see rama in balkan is described that when rama is not even born devatas and lot of normal people yakshas gandharvas they go to uh, vishnu ji and brahma that there is havoc on earth right lot of these people who have rakshas tendencies and Ra- ravana is leading them they are creating havoc on earth they are not allowing the dharmic work to go on they are not allowing pujas to go on they are not allowing havanas to go on 
they are not even allowing normal life to go on so we need you to come back on earth again like you did by matas avatar like you did by kurma avatar or var avatar or narsim avatar or vaman avatar or parshuram avatar we need you again so he said okay i'll come i'll come as the sons of uh, dashrath so a fight between rama and ravana would have anyway happened a lot of people give credit to kki and mantra that the whole ramana happened because of kki and mantra kki and mantra just became part of the story their intention was not good their intention was not good so giving them credit is a wrong idea it would have happened anyways a kki and mantra supanka they were just trigger if not this trigger if not trigger 1 and trigger 2 trigger 3 or trigger 4 might have fired but that had to anyway happen that was rama took bird to destroy uh, the negativity which was represented by talakas mari supankas khar dushan indrajit and ravana right so again these are these are i call them kutark like there is tark which is logic which is mis logic right i'll just find something in the story just to throw a muck on you right but if you are if you are well read that's why i teach my students that how to counter in fact we have started on parents demand hari ji you will be surprised parents said okay you have taught ramayana one which is the story leadership principles and and how to how to uh, get the essence of the story take us to level 2 and we started level 2 also we completed one batch of level 2 where we can discuss uh, all the all the blame and muck that is been thrown on ramayana has ramayana happened or not why valmiki ji written ramayana is it a real or fiction was hanuman ji a monkey or human being what about the theory of 10 heads of uh, ravan what about vimana like can 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 someone fly how can someone fly in a in a pushpak vimana so we give scientific proof available proof for all of them right and this supanka incident uh, uh hanuma ram ji killing wali what is the debate exactly around there uh, how ram ji is preferring Ra- raj dharma or parivar dharma we clarify all of that in level 2 right so again this kutarkas will keep coming but we should be becoming intellectual warriors so that we can give back uh, uh, if we have a thorough reading of uh, valmiki ramayan that's why i invite a lot of you i invite a lot of you please do join my classes uh, i'm sorry i'm trying to advertise my classes but again the idea is to take it to many many families so that yeah. there's no there's not only shantanu gupta or nilesh oak or or or, or yashodeep or sai sarupa there only not few names on ayodhya research institute or dr yp singh or only anita bos that not only 10 15 50 100 scholars they should be like indian population is big right hindus uh, hindu diaspora living outside is amazing right they all should be intellectual warriors and that will be the real renaissance of indian culture <laughs> yeah definitely and uh, on this lines we have a question from the audience uh, kartik a and s and he would like to know what would be the first full fledged translation of ramayana so after valmiki ramayana is it kamba ramayana which we say that is a full fledged translation what are your thoughts on that uh, so 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 i have so i think this is a easy question i i, I don't know it right now and i normally i do in, in my classes also if i don't know i normally say and i tell every scholar then when you don't know say don't know right but this is a simple question this can be found out very easily i i can let you know and you you can let your let your users know uh, but there is no there is no major social science around it at which came first and which came second i think wherever wherever there is a uh, wherever there is a uh, prominence of literature they took upon the text of ramayana but again the question has uh, i think the the more philosophical question is that ramayana is such a profound text that even in a tamil nadu where there are a lot of north india south indian movements today politically kamman ramayana was required and it was translated in tamil even in a kerala where uh, where a prominent hindu thought is not getting uh, enough space there is a adhyatma ramayana and even in north of india where a lot of people were not able to access the original valmiki ramayana because sanskrit scholars are getting reduced reduced because the because gurukuls were being destroyed by british and uh, uh, by moguls and by a lot of muslim invaders uh, tulsi dasi came with avadi uh, in avadi language a local simple language tulsi ramayana so i think they happened need based but again the, the 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 crux of the matter is they all honored that ramayana text has to be translated when it happened we can find out that's a text, that's a factual question it can be find out very easily right but again they all felt the need that it should be translated should be contextualized and the, the the text is so profound that it should be translated into a avadi into a malayalam into a tamil i, i, in, into into a thai into a, in a bhasha in indonesia ramakan uh, indonesia have a own ramayana kakavin ramayana right it should be translated in all of there in the local context that's that's a far important point but i don't know the exact exact sequence uh, which which came first but i can find out and let you know
Hari, you are on mute. Sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you, Shantanaji. It was uh, surprising to hear that Indonesia, which is a Muslim country, still recites uh, uh, Ramayana every day. Uh, where did we lose there? For example, uh, if I can say, I don't know if I can say this. Uh, we, we are the country who can own Ramayana and Mahabharata, and we are still struggling to uh, push it to the yeah. masses. But uh, even we had Muslim invaders, and even they had Muslim invaders. But still, we, we clearly see an example from another country where uh, they can, uh, where the government can do that and, and the people can easily follow them in the culture. So where, where do you think we, we lost this principle see, of... Uh, this Sorry. question uh, is, is, it has a political connotation. And if you allow me, I have to take a political route to answer this, right? Because it has a political history involved, right? Because today's governments are run through the polity of today. So we have to go back a little bit to the history and the independence movement, right? So independence movement, you know, it's all led by Indian National Congress, uh, largely. And then a lot of Krantikaris like, like Subhashan Bose, uh, P. Brain, Savarkar Ji's P. Brain, right? And they all are very culturally, a lot of people are very culturally grounded, right? And then came the idea of that how to include Muslim people in this whole movement, right? Mahatma Gandhi tried it by, by helping them in Khilafat movement, which was nothing to do with India. Very, uh, to my mind, that, that should be counted as the biggest mistake of, biggest political mistake of Mahatma Gandhi. So to support Khilafat movement is nothing to do with India. But again, as we reached 45, 1945, 1947, this, this bug of secularism, right? Somehow we have to appease Muslims even at the cost of whatever it may take. Right. We were ready to give them anything just so that they will be part of a uh, uh, country called India, country called Bharat. Even then, we end up giving them everything and this is, uh, partition also happened. Right. And after that, a lot of Muslims remained in India. You, you need their votes also. So this, this thing called Muslim appeasement or minority uh, appeasement started as a political strategy. And Congress very blatantly shown it. Very blatantly shown it. And if you see from Nehru to Indira Gandhi, and this this may, may this may be a lot of people find it a little controversial, but let me say it anyways. From from Nehru's education minister to Indira Gandhi's uh, uh, Nehru's education minister was uh, uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, right? And Indira Gandhi's one of the education minister was Narul Hassan. There were a lot of Muslim people who were the education ministers of India, and I, I'm sure you 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 are already getting what I'm hinting at. They were never comfortable with the text of Ramana and Mahabharata. In fact, when Mahatma Gandhi was murdered and, and Nehru, without any proof, taken everybody from RSS in the jail. And, and when even Patel uh, said that in my inquiry, and Patel was the home minister, Sadar Patel was the home minister. He said, I have done the serious level of research. There is no iota of proof against RSS. Nehru was not convinced. And you know what he what he directed one day to... to, to, to uh, Patel, that I am hearing that RSS is, is doing a lot of Gita reciting sessions. Just check them out what is exactly happening there. So he got so paranoid that even a Gita chanting session is a problem for him. So can you expect such a Nehru to put Gita or Mahabharat or Ramayana in a, in a class text? Not at all. Not at all. In fact, in fact, the founding fathers of Indian constitution 1947 decided that Hindi should be the link language, not English. But by the time 1965, Nehru got cold feet. He said, no, 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 no. Now my Tamil friends are not happy with it. My, my South Indian friends are not happy with it. Let's be English. So we allowed a foreign language to become a link language. But a language was already spoken by almost 30, 40 of the percent of the people. And it's still 60 percent people in India, living in India. are uh, the, For them, they are the mother tongue or is the second language or third language. Even then, if Naren Modi declares a national language, it will become a problem. Oh my God, no, 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 Tamil is going down, Telugu is going No, Tamil is not going down, Telugu is not going down. They are very strong languages, but can link language be Hindi? Because it's a practical thing, 60% people in India speak Hindi. If a Odia guy goes to Tamil Nadu as a labor, which language will he speak in Hari? Hariji? Will he speak in Odia? No. Will he speak in Tamil? No. Does he know English? No. He will know whatever Hindi he knows and whatever Hindi a Tamil guy knows. Hindi is a de facto natural natural uh, link language which Nehru did, did not allow. So Nehru was paranoid of uh, Gita sessions. Yeah, Nehru was paranoid of, of Hindi as a link language because for, for him, if we put Gita in the classroom, 
if you put mahabharata in the classroom if you put uh, ramayana in the classroom that may not that may not go well with his education minister that may no go well with his a uh, lot of his votaries right and by the time indira gandhi come she has given the whole economic seat to jnu you know right uh, with 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 kamaraj uh, uh, there was a major defection in congress and congress the indira gandhi came in minority there is a kamaraj faction in tamil nadu which defected from congress and indira gandhi came in minority and who held them then the left parties and there was a, and, and, and exactly the same time jnu was getting set up so they, they say and narul hasan was the uh, if if i'm if i'm not wrong with the name a muslim guy was the education minister of uh, indira gandhi he has given in a plate to left parties that you take jnu like at the intellectual intellectual uh, uh, powerhouse lighthouse of india and we will run the polity there was a clear division of power we will run the polity and jnu has become become the source of information for whole of india you go to any major university in india go to andhra university karnataka university bangalore university top 10 hod's top 10 uh, deans you will find they have done the phd's from jnu right so the thought is uh, traveling from jnu and that's why they have started all these negative commentaries of ramayana and mahabharata because they all knew very well that if this society will run with ramayana and mahabharata then there will be a very combined and very very cohesive society which they never want they learn only one thing for british that divide and rule right which which worked beautifully for them right so this is the way we we, we went wrong and then started and this is the way we went wrong in 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 economy also we started with socialism when as mindset we are very free economy people we are the only one we say earth can be the legitimate goal we never hated uh, industrialist we never hated capitalist in fact the whole and uh, freedom movement of mahatma gandhi was funded by birlas right by funded by capital right but we hated capitalism for some reason and we started with a very social in thought and that's why uh, india took in 1991 india was forced to free the economy people people give the credit to a lot of people that they, they, they opened the economy no they were forced to open the economy right yeah which we which they could have done in 1947 so i think yeah historically from 1947 the way we manage our polity the way we manage our education system the kind of people who were at the helm of ministry of human resource and development uh, they they never wanted geeta mahabharat this amazing text though they were forced to put it on 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 uh, on on uh, the print book of the indian constitution as i told you the picture of rama lakshman and sita the, is there in the original copy of the constitution but they did not go beyond that they did not follow the true ideas of mahatma gandhi of rama raj uh, they only just took it as a word so that they can impress some people for 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 voting yeah i think that the that was more political as you indicated yeah the question was indeed uh, on that lines but uh, yeah thanks for sharing your perspective there we are running short of time uh, shantanu ji would you still have couple of minutes uh... i'm fine i'm fine i have okay. i have 15 20 minutes uh, before i have another session with the tv channel yeah yeah okay so we have another interesting question from satya madan and uh, he would like to know the ambition of uh, the ramayana school as such and what and where all it is extended uh, so i think satya madan ji uh, this is across uh, united states europe and canada everywhere so you can do visit uh, the website the ramayana school then you should be able to find uh, the course details and other action uh, other items yeah shantanu ji you want to add there yeah yeah so i think what what sat uh, satyanathan ji is asking is a very good question and i should take a blame on myself i am running ramayana school for almost one and a half year right and i have done hardly 10 workshop uh, pre march and then comes covid covid forced me to go it online and now i have done 25 batches in just last 5 months and that too in 16 countries i had parts from luxembourg i had parts from belgium i had parts from mauritius like the countries you told i have anyway parts from where there is a big indian diaspora like 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 united states like uk like germany like mauritius like singapore like australia so now we are we are accessing it's now just a matter of time zone sata ji if the time zone matches your time zone you just get on the zoom Mm-hmm. right so now i think our challenge is how can i match so many time zones and when the schools are opening the online schools are opening and if, if you can ask me i must be the one person who might be knowing in almost 25 countries are the school open or not or are they physical or online 
right? I have done this research because I have to set my batches accordingly, right? So I know for the matter of fact, in Australia and Singapore, the physical school have opened. In in yeah. graduate school, the online school have opened last week. So I mean, I must be the only person who must be tracking the school opening and closing in throughout the world, right? Because so that I can schedule my classes accordingly, right? But the idea is to convert it into a Ramayana University, a Ithihasa Academy, so that by and especially for kids, because adults, I'm sure somehow find their knowledge, right? Especially for kids, because they are the future intellectual warriors. So by the time they are out of your control, like by the time they are eighteen, twenty, right? And I I want to catch them young when they are eight to twelve or eight to fourteen, right? Uh, can I give them the the basic hunger, the basic essence of at least this ten text, which is which is Ramayana, Mahabharata, Vedas, Upanishads, Gita, Chanakya, some of the important historical texts also, like Shivaji, like Jhansi ki Rani, like Hanuman Chalisa as a text, right? uh vishnu srotram uh, can i can i make them remember vishnu srotram in fact we are we are we are uh, hari ji uh, now inventing techniques that in a five day course how can i make them by heart hanuman chalisa right uh, how can i make them eight eight chapais eight dohas a day and weave amazing stories around every word weave amazing stories about every chapai and at the end of five days they should know major portion of hanuman chalisa right so i am trying to develop a lot of smart techniques working a lot of pedagogists And working with a lot of instructional designers. So, how can I present Ramayana, Mahabharat, all this Indian 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 knowledge system to them in a very uh, uh, modern format, so to call modern format? And that's my aim. That's my aim to set up it. I need a lot of effort. Need a lot of support from all of you. Currently, my only source of revenue is my registration. I'm trying to raise money from various means. I'm saying anybody who can help in uh, resources, who can help us uh, in registration, in partnerships. batches for a community uh, batches for a city it's all welcome to make it grow like a big university of online education of uh, of hindu knowledge system yeah thank you i i just want to add in this uh, to our audiences because some of our core team members from sombash they have also participated in the ramayana school and in there they uh, the, the courses are really engaging and you could see the way the assignments are given it's, it's kind of family oriented and it's all the family come together and uh, work on those assignments it's based on like crosswords the puzzles that will keep the kids as well entertained so yeah definitely i would uh, suggest people to enroll for the ramayana school courses and i see another quick question from uh, ramya nitarshini balaji and uh, she would like to ask uh, when would the mahabharata school uh be started when would that be i i think we did answer at the beginning i think it's uh, somewhere in october shantanu ji do you want to confirm that so, so i'm i'm working on that i'm working with couple of scholars sai swarupa ji couple of other scholars i'm working on the on the mahabharata text it's a very dense text right and and uh, how to present that dense text that that complex relationship between so many characters to children so that they can get what I, what we want to present to them and there is geeta is also inbuilt in them at least some portion of geeta i have to touch do i'll do a separate course on geeta but in october i should be in a fair situation to make a very robust course and we are also going in a technology platform we are also uh, uh, creating a whole of our ramayana school in, under which will open mahabharata hanuman chalisa vedas upanishads into a very smart technology system which have a login lot of lot of assignments i can rate you i can give you certificates everything will be very smart hopefully one of the parents is helping me can you imagine one of the parents is helping me uh, in 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 making making uh, we adopt the technology of today so mahabharata should come some sometime in october yeah that's a, that's a, that's if i work very hard it should come in october thank you shantanu yeah. ji uh, it's it's re- it's really nice to see uh, so much effort that you put on uh, uh, making us aware of uh, ramayana and learn ramayana uh, we have a small rapid fire round uh, where we would name uh, uh, some ramayana characters and you can uh, name what quality comes to your mind when you uh see those characters so uh, i will start with the first character uh, lord lakshmana uh always very alert and very conscious mm-hmm. uh, hanuman uh i think very dedicated amazing communicator nice. wali a uh, wali uh, who rela- finally realizes his his his, his folly his problem his mistake next is a tricky one uh, vibishna a uh, vibishna i think over uh, even he he knows how to choose the right side <laughs> uh, 
Mother Sita. Sita. Uh, Mother Sita, oh my God, amazing! Uh, the strongest, uh, strongest woman in Indian history. And Lord Rama. Oh, Lord Rama! I can't. I, I think words, words, words are less. Valmiki has written the whole Ramayana. I think, yeah, I'm saying the perfect person. We all should. We all should want our kids to be like. Ah, nice. Yeah. I, before uh, we end, end the session, I just want to take the last question from the audience uh, from Ms. Uh, Priya Amit, wherein she asks uh, about, yeah, did they have Gita study circle in RK mission, Ramakrishna missions? And there are a lot, lot of workshops on Bhagavad Gita as well. So can we have similar study circles on Ramayana? Yeah, I think we, we, we should. We should. In fact, I'm, I'm requesting a lot of my parents that I can only do a six day, 10 day, one month workshop. But again, Ramayana is a huge text. As after the class, uh, there are there are now this very aware parents who can lead the discussion and they should take it a they should take it a aim upon themselves. There's 24,000 shlokas. If you take 20, 30, 50 shlokas a week, a day, it will take a couple of years to complete Ramayana. Gita, that way, a smaller text. Gita is only 700 shlokas. Uh, Ramayana and Mahabharata is a longer project. So I think every city, I think now I'm trying to start. Uh, Ramana study circle, Mahabharata study circle, so that it will go on for a couple of years and one set of family will complete the whole Ramayana maybe in a couple of years and that'll be amazing. Amazing idea. It was in mind, but again, now some of Priyaj is articulated even well. I'll push it further to the parents who has gone through my classes that uh, they should start in their own own families and I will I will provide them the bandwidth of marketing because now I'm a part of a bigger pool of Ramayana, uh, Ramayana learners. If they want to start, I can give them the intellectual bandwidth and also the marketing bandwidth to make this this, this free sessions. Yeah, Th thank you, Shantanuji. So this brings us uh, towards the end of uh, this session today, I, and I would really like to thank you again, uh, Shantanuji, to share your knowledge uh, through our group, Sumbash Belgium, and bringing awareness about Ramayana. Uh, we we are sure that each one of us have several takeaways and would definitely enroll for courses offered by the Ramayana School to gain more knowledge that each one of us can benefit from. We thank our eminent speaker, our team, our audience, all for being part of this program. Jai Shri Ram. I, now, I, I now request Hari to end the session with a Shanti Mantra. Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityoma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Sita Sita Jaya Rama Jaya Jaya Rama Sita Jaya Rama Jaya Jaya Rama Sita Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Ram.